they sent to chuck this sucker into the case? God, the quality is gonna suck on this video. I am not a professional computer builder. Do not take any of my advice. Uh, so it's time to install the motherboard. You know what that means. Do you? Do you? Okay, whatever. Um, we gotta stick in a bunch of screws here to actually mount it on. So what you're gonna wanna do is find this case full of the goldy colored ones. And we're gonna want to install them in here. It takes three per row. It's all listed in the, it'll be listed in your actual uh, case guide. In the bag, you will get this little black thingy. This thing here. And this one actually mounts on to the top of these things. So you can screw them in properly. Pretty handy. Well, I think that's what they're for. I'm just guessing at this point. And yeah, seems to work. Yeah, we're gonna have to time lapse this sucker, definitely. Hmm. Okay. This is not at all nerve wracking. You can go. Okay, you get done. Fan cable, get out of the way, please. And we're gonna stick our fingers in the back to hopefully help leave this into position. And almost perfectly lined up. There we go. Woo -hoo. All the screw holes are lined up. Everything looks like it's fine. It's lined up at the back, that's nice and flush. I think we are golden to screw this sucker down. We've got eight screws in a bag here that look to be the ones that hold on the motherboard. Well, it's either that or this one's, but there, there's more than eight in this, so I'm just gonna go with the ones that's got eight in it because it's telling me I'm supposed to use eight of them. And that's as far as this is gonna go. Like, see that corner in there? How do I get a screw in there? <laughs> like, you've got tiny hands, tinier hands. A magnetic one of these. I don't think it's magnetic. Boom. <laughs> oh my god, the timing was perfect. <laughs> well, it's you. Damn, I god. fucking would have had it. I don't think the boo had anything to do with <laughs> it. Totally did. But you dropped it like right where it needed to go. That was incredible. Respect. Are you going straight? Yeah, looks to be. Yeah. Nicely done. All right. That's that sucker installed. Now, CPU fan. Where are you going to go? You know what? We'll plug in this, or these case fans. We'll plug them in, in in a minute. Next up, it's time for the big boy. We're going to need how many slots for this sucker? Uh, if that goes in there, we're going to need two slots. You're going to want to open up a couple of slots for this sucker. Depending on the size of your graphics card, it's going to need a little bit of airflow. Christ. Actually, I think a long, long time ago, they used to come in PCIe only or something, or PCI slots or something. Oh man, it even comes with a little rubber cover. I don't know what that is. Nice. Okay, just can I show it to us again for a sec. Oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> and where does it go in? It goes into that slot right here, right beside the heatsink. In fact, you would notice that the heatsink of the CPU comes out so far it almost touches it, but not quite. And uh, also there's this clip here that needs to be done. Okay, then we gotta lever this sucker in here. There we go. When I go in to put in that hard drive, that's going to be really interesting. The hard drive has to go in here. Oh god, that is gonna suck. Okay, not gonna worry about it. Not gonna worry about it. Alright, and to screw this sucker in, we will just restore in the clamps that we took out of I think we are golden. Is there a connector there? What's the yeah, connector for? It needs it needs to, its own connection to the power supply. It can't get enough power from the motherboard. These no things are way. fucking monstrous. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. They are stupidly monstrous in power drop, which is the next step, which is putting in power supply. Right, so power supply install. Uh, this should be fairly straightforward. You just want to see which way the writing is on it, and then that's probably the side that's supposed to go up. 
I assume. Like, we can only guess, really. They don't really give you solid instructions here. Uh, we got to somehow fit that in there, so... I'm definitely going to need a music montage for this. Right, then hard drive should slot right in. Please, please. Hard drive. Oh. Power supply. Uh, it does fit in, but what I'm worried about now is... Then we mount this sucker back up. Then we just have to screw in the hard drive, which requires one, two, three, four screws. Which ones we use, nobody knows. We'll, we'll pick something at random out of the case screws. Power supply. Power supply, sorry. Do I, keep, I, keep, I keep calling it hard drive? Never mind. Uh, power supply it is. No, it will not work. Never mind, we'll try different screws. This and the cable ties. This looks like what we use. You know, I see people online building these things and they have like, all this fancy equipment and stuff. I feel like if we had that, it would make absolutely no difference and it would still be a complete shambles. And just a couple more screws and we're good to go. Power cable time. Let's see. Power of cables. We should probably figure out where all of these go. This, some of this stuff connects up to the motherboard. Some of this is fan power or LED power. Oh my God, this is going to be like a nightmare. It's good. See, it's all black, so it's kind of hard to see anyway, but... Eh, what can you do? Yeah. Eh. we got power cables. We should probably figure out which ones we want. Uh, hard drive cables, no. How do you know which ones are which? For what? Uh, HDD, DVD. Ah. S, S, SATA, SATA. Hit hard drive DVD. Ah, here we go. ATX main connector. ATX motherboard connector. So that would be that one. That one we're going to need. Uh, that looks to be old school hard drives for the old uh, spinning drives. Uh, you also look to be all hard drive based. Jesus. Hard drive DVD as well. Never mind. Hold on. Uh, you also. Never mind. Got... Oh, these ones. Ah, VGA. Yep, these look to be the important ones. We got VGA3, VGA1. I'm really going to have to read the motherboard manual for a bunch of this stuff. CPU1, CPU2, VGA2. So we got VGA1, 2, and 3. This could take a minute. So before we go any further, we should probably address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is this fan, which is now too hot, tall. It's sticking up too high, and there's nothing we can do about it because it's mounted right on top of the RAM. There we've pushed it down as low as it can go. Uh, so we're going to have to remove this, take it out, move it over the other side, and mount it on the other side, which means you have to remove the graphics card. Yeah, I'm just going to save you all the pain, do that off screen, but uh, yeah, maybe this is something you want to think about if you want to use a case this tiny, because it just will not, we can't put the case cover back on here with, with this fan in place. It is time to start hooking up all these power cables. Problem is, let me be able to see here because, well, I have a terrible camera setup. But this is where the power cables have to get plugged in, and this giant hard drive thing is in the way, and well, we don't need the hard drive thing. Simple problem, simple solution. Rip the hard drive thing out. And there's just four screws here, we rip these out, and that hard, whole hard drive bay will go. Also, bonus, we get four screws that we'll have no reason to use. There's going to be like a thunk noise as the hard drive tray hits something. But don't worry, that's completely anticipated. See? I knew that was going to happen. Put back in the dust filter. And the whole hard drive straight won't come out because <laughs> maybe if that was really smart. You know what? At least it gives us more room for now. We've got more room to fit in the cables. I'll live with it. This is the special connector they give you for an RTX 3080. You have to jam two cables into the sucker, so you got VGA. We got VGA two and VGA three in there plugged into this sucker, which is the Nvidia whatever proprietary one. And now we have to plug this into the power supply. Might be the simplest way is to actually remove this sucker. That is so handy. That makes things an awful lot simpler. Okay, so we've got two P8, P4 cables in here. They slide through at the other side. Mm. One. That does not fit in there. Eh, how about here? PCIe 2. Perfect. Next up, motherboard cable. Uh, so this one, ATX main. This one that says motherboard on it with big MB. And then right adjacent to it is going to be this sucker, which I presume will plug into here. I don't know, I haven't actually looked at the manual for that bit, to be honest, but it, it looks close enough. I mean, putting it anywhere else would just be crazy, right? Uh, then we also need the CPU one, which... Yeah, this one is the CPU4P8, CPU1 and CPU2, P4P8. 
Uh, for that one, God, I make a lot of presumptions, but you've got to assume like the people who design this know what they're doing and they just assume everyone's idiots and is going to need guides. So it would appear this just goes into a regular PCIe 1 slot. Done. Okay, another board goes in here. Mm, so professional. <laughs> is that the last of the cables? No more cables go in there? I'm pretty sure, but you never know. Actually, I'm that out. Oh, nice. If you're using regular hard drives, you might want to keep that tray though. This should make cable management just that little bit simpler. For extra cables over here, we've got all of this stuff down the side. Uh, this is all very important. That's going to be uh, the main board one. Oh God, you know what? We'll hook them up as we go. This here is uh, the USB port from the top of the computer. In this case, turns out I got the older version. I didn't get the one with the, the USB-C port. My bad. Oh well, doesn't matter. But uh, up here you can see we've got audio, we've got USB, we've got a bunch of ports. They, they all link back to these cables. So we want to take these cables and carefully put them through here where they're going to go. So, yeah. Nice. Close enough. That's you being careful? Careful enough. And you can see we have a bunch of cables sticking out. And we have to plug all of those in. Oh god. Why did I ever agree to make this a tutorial of sorts? Actually, this is a horrible tutorial. Alright. There's a USB kit port connector down here. Your best bet if you want to figure all this stuff out. Go look at your motherboard manual. It'll tell you all of the ports where they are. So what we want to do is find the USB port to plug it into. 14. Yeah, 14, so 14 is USB 3.0 and USB 3 whatever. Simple enough. We just grab this sucker and plug it in right there. Yeah, it's probably impossible to see, but you know what? We'll have a, a nice picture of it at the end. And done. USB ports on the top of the case connected. The harder ones, though, are these suckers. You've got your reset SW, hard drive LED, power SW, power LED. It's basically all this stuff to do with the top of the case. Or you turn on and off your PC. Yeah, that'll, that'll gonna suck. We'll do that one last. First one we'll grab out of the way is this one here. This one is HD audio. It's for the audio panel at the front so that you can plug in your headphones and things like that. Personally, I'm not going to be using it, but we'll still do it anyway. Over here on ours is the audio. And basically, I looked it up again on the manual. You're pretty much just gonna have to go through the manual on this. It's different on all of them pretty much. Like, well, I assume it's different on all of them or not identical. Honestly, I don't do enough computer building to know for sure. Uh, this one's missing a pin, which seems to be in the bottom right, so... Yeah, you can't really mess this up. There's only one way to install it. Well, I mean, it's not like you can't mess it up, but... You can't get it in without breaking it if you, don't, if you do it wrong. So, mm -hmm. there should only be one way of doing it. Angle it a little bit more, I don't think. Alright, yeah. So, with that in and that in, all I've got to do is get these... and plug them into this section down here. This is a nightmare. I'm not going to show you me doing it because it's going to be me fiddling around for 20 goddamn minutes trying to read writing that's too small to plug in pins that are too small. We hooked up all those little cables down there. It took it, it took a little bit of time, I'm not going to lie. Now, the thing is, what you're going to want to do is find this part of your motherboard manual. This is what tells you where all the little pins go and you'll have to read through it and using a little bit of logic and reason you'll figure out where they go probably. But don't worry if you get it wrong. I knew someone who had it completely wrong and their power button was the reset button and the reset button was their power button. They got by for like years. Made it really confusing for other people using their PC, but for them, they fed along just fine. Hi, Finn. Next up, we want to grab these power cables and plug them in. So I suppose first off, let's do the graphics card. Graphics card is going to get plugged in down here, so this closest section to it. All right. Oof. All of those cables again, but can you still see? So, here's the cable, it went all the way through the back, and then we just plug it directly into the graphics card. And... Jesus. This thing takes a stupid amount of power. It's just... it's ridiculous, to be honest. Graphics cards have gotten to the point where, I don't know, if it keeps going like this, like, normal graphics cards are just going to be a thing of the past. You're going to be spending oodles of power just to get your graphics going. Yeah, done. Next up. We have these two cables here. This one is your main motherboard power. So this is for powering your motherboard and to provide most of the power to all the devices there. That's why it's huge. And this is for CPU power. And uh, these ones will go up here to the top part of the cable management. I do have the cable management on the system. You have to do the older one. 
still amazing. We get to, we'll strap these on later and tidy it all up. But for now, you probably won't be able to get a good picture of this, but down here we've got our power, our motherboard power. Uh, you can look it up in your, your manual. Honestly, uh, you're going to be reading a lot about your motherboard manual to figure out where everything goes, but it's usually pretty straightforward to plug this sucker in. In fact, there's a lot of these have missing pins or things that don't allow you to plug in the wrong way. So try and plug them in the right way. Done, done, and done. And then this last cable, this has to go to the CP port, which is all the way down there. Yeah, this is going to be a bit... You have smaller hands than me. I, I may be enlisting your help. So yeah, we'll, we'll be back in a minute. After much, much pain and gnashing and wailing, we managed to get that cable in, the one in the very, very corner there. We also then put in this, this fan and this fan. We just hooked them up to the motherboard. There's, there's actually only two fan controllers on this that I can find. There's one over here for a system fan, and then there's a second one over here for a system fan. So we had to run the cable from this all the way over there. I, I don't know why. There really should be more system fan controllers on this. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, or maybe there's extenders you can find. Uh, whatever. I just ran the cable. It works. Everything is now connected. We should be good. All we have to do now is hook this sucker up to a monitor and see if it works or if it explodes. I don't know. It's, it's been a while since I did one of these, but we'll, we'll probably be fine. Probably. Yeah, that's a very snug fit on that fan. Hmm. I had to double check that a couple of times. Done. It is done! Well, now it's time to see if we can actually boot this sucker up. So, new monitor, 1440p. Now, I'd like to pretend like we didn't open this already, but we opened this yesterday. Hey, you weren't going to say. Yes. I never said I wasn't going to say. I mean, okay, I was going to make it look like you hadn't opened it, but come on, there's no white line. I wanted to see what this looked like. It's a pretty beautiful monitor. All right. Problem is, it's a huge sucker. I mean, you spend all that money on a graphics card, you might as well, you know, invest in something to enjoy it. Like, that screen real estate is important. Uh... Oh, yeah, what's that? What's that block thing? Is that the power block? Actually has its own power block. Cool. I didn't realize that. Well, there's more stuff. Uh, we also have a mount to stand it on. Though I've got a desk mount, so I'm going to mount it to the desk somehow. I'll figure that out later. And... Oh, there's the rest of the desk mount. Alright, this is the mount. Yoink! Mmm. It is surprisingly light. Like, dear lord, it's light. You keep expecting this thing to weigh a ton, but honestly the motherboard weighs more than this. Surprisingly awesome. I know that's a silly thing to point out on a monitor, but it actually looks like they wasted too much time and effort making that beautiful. Oh well. Uh, time to uh, mount this racket and hook it up to the PC. Just uh, give us a couple of minutes. Hmm. We good? Well, we probably should pre-test this before we let you see, because it might just burst into flames, but I figure Probably fine, and it'd be more entertaining if it did it. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Power switch at the back. There's a power switch on your power supply. God damn it. Okay. What's that? No, never mind. Never mind, perfectly. Yep. I think that's the better button for the monitor. Yep, yep, yep. No signal. Okay, well that's not good. Come on, do something. Ooh, cool. The RAM actually does have a bunch of LEDs on it. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. Okay. That was a bias screen. Perfect. Time to open the keyboard and the mouse. Yep, there's the BIOS. Reboot inspect proper boot device insert boot media inspect boot device. We've got an actual BIOS. Perfect. Uh, 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 keyboard and mouse it is. Now this 
was the quietest keyboard I could find. Well, I wanted a mechanical one because I kind of got addicted to the mechanical keyboards after a while. But the last one I had was just insanely loud. Just stupidly loud. This one supposedly has, where is it, genuine Cherry MX. And Cherry MX are supposed to be the quiet keys. Whether there are or not, well, we'll find out in a minute. Alright, let's see what's inside this sucker. Oh, and I also got this slightly shortened one without the numpad. I want a little bit more desk real estate because my desk is already way too cramped. test at some point, like between the two, but yes, and the keys still feel, mm, don't take a little bit of getting used to, but I think I can like that. Also, it looks like it has a detachable keyboard cable. Ah. Yoink, yoink, there's probably a manual somewhere. It's fine. Alright. Okay. USB-C. That is beautiful. And... Oh, that's a nice touch. It's got a little bit of a cable tie, so you can shorten the cables and you don't have a giant freaking cable on here. I like mouse. Also, yes, I went with a wired mouse instead of instead of wireless, just because I'm too lazy to charge the batteries, okay? It's just easier this way. Eh. No, it's like this device. Oh god, there's no F12. How do I get into the boot menu? <laughs> Could be a problem. Uh, set of guide language English. You have to get your old. You have to get your other key. I might have to. You know what? I'm going to go get a USB boot key, boot key. Windows boot USB key. Uh, also, I went and got my old keyboard. Just so it has an F12 key so I can hit it. So that one does not come with an F12. So, I think you have to hit an FN key, whatever, it was too complicated when I was lazy. Now we can just go into the BIOS and change the boot device. Come on. Come on. Yeah. So, after getting my old keyboard out of storage, we, we installed Windows. USB key, keyboard, done. Problem solved. Windows installed. Now I'm gonna to go to bed. Well, okay. First I'm gonna have a couple more drinks, then I'm gonna to go to bed. And I'll finish this off tomorrow. I'll get some more footage out of it, but just, I think the next footage will be on it after I get all the drivers installed and everything. I still have to actually register Windows. There's a few things, a few bits and bobs, but just goes to show pretty much anyone can build a PC. True, you have to read an awful lot of manuals. And I probably should have looked at an awful lot of tutorials before I started, but you know, you can muddle through. You just read it through and it probably works. I still have to go through and change the RAM timings because the RAM you get is still based on default speed, so I think it's 2133. So we'll have to enable the XM XMP. There'll be a bunch of stuff we'll have to do, but that's for later. For now, I'm just going to relax and enjoy that this computer works. And then I'm going to figure out how to turn off all the LEDs. Anyway, good luck. After a good night's sleep, I went ahead and had a check on the RAM. It was still running at 2133 megahertz. So it went straight into the BIOS, and this was the first screen you see. It's just XMP is disabled. You just click on it and go XMP Profile 1. You just literally one click and it's done. And then you just save and exit. And then your RAM is running at full speed, 3600 megahertz. It's, yeah, XMP is one of those things where the people were overclocking their memory and their processors anyway. And XMP was one of those things where the, the companies that were making it said, hey, we're making this high quality RAM. Why don't we just rate it, test it ourselves, and then tell people what they can get out of it and sort of warranty it, but not really, but sort of, but maybe. As in, they'll, they'll help you out if it breaks, but, you know, maybe, maybe not. Depends how they feel, but you're probably covered. Probably, maybe, sort of. You know what I mean? It's pretty clear. You're probably maybe covered. I still have to do a bunch of speed tests. Like, I want to compare this with RimWorld, and I want to compare this with Oxygen Not Included, and just see how the times change. But I haven't actually managed to configure the PC yet to use it. Like, I've got OBS, and I've installed a bunch of software on it, but the problem is I also have to get to the plugins for my recording software. So there's some software I have to download, which I've only, down I only configured my sound once. And it was a nightmare to do. It's really hard to get your sound just right. So I sort of have to copy over all the plugins I'm using and then change all the settings on them. I can't find a way to, to do it automatically. So I'm going to have to just manually do that. That's going to take a little time. It's been a busy week. 
been a busy week, but I'll get around to it next week and I should be recording and everything should be running on the new PC next week. I know the graphics card I have is just way overkill for the games I play, but I would like to have the option to play some of the shinier games, and there is the odd game I do play in the off-season. Uh, you've got this here, which is Control. This game is very shiny. This is on Mac settings, and we've enabled the DLSS or whatever, the new fancy lighting technology version 2 they've got going on, and game runs just fine. It's kind of scary how good it is. I think I will struggle to find a game to make this, this card cry, but, you know... We, we can always hope. As well as that, it kind of does help with video rendering. So, yeah, I, 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 I regret absolutely nothing. I did end up using one extra tool, a kind of a pliers thing. This allowed me to remove the, the post on the M2 drive so I can install the second M2 drive. Well, I was able to move it from its whatever slot it was into the new one so the M2 drive would fit in. So technically, we required three tools. Well, four if you count the Lefroig. There is an argument to be made that I have picked the worst time to upgrade. Intel are releasing a, a new CPU with a whole new architecture that could be amazingly good. AMD are going to be releasing some new stuff in, in a few months as well that could also be amazing. Uh, they're upgrading to DDR5 RAM that's supposedly great. Um, it's a generational jump actually. We're on we're on DDR4 RAM now and it's just it's been incrementally improved but DDR5 will, will just you know blow that all out of the water. However, my counter argument would be uh, one, never believe any of the hype. God knows it will be any better. It could be 2% better. It could be 5% better. Maybe they'll get a whole 10% out of it. But yeah, I'm still not paying, you know, early adopter prices. Hell no. Do you know how expensive that stuff's going to be right out of the box? The new RAM, the new processor, you know, all that stuff's going to be crazy expensive. And that's assuming it's worthwhile, as in the performance is there. Like a year and a half, maybe from now, possibly even two, I'd think about it because I'm not going to be an early adopter. I know that because I'm not willing to deal with the bugs and all the stuff that you could come with it. So I am more than happy to upgrade now. This PC will last me two, three years easy peasy and probably longer than that unless really demanding games come along. The copy of Windows I got, I, I basically just downloaded it. There's a, there's a website called Kingwin. It's the only one I've ever used for actually getting cheap copies of Windows. I've used it. I think it's the second time I've used it. I don't know how good they are. Don't you know, Maybe do your own research. But I think I paid about 38 euros. Yeah, it was about 38 euros for a copy of Windows. And I went with the Home Edition instead of Professional. I'm using Professional currently, but I thought I'd give Home Edition a go. It's supposedly better for gaming. Last time I tried to use control footage on my channel, uh, the recording software couldn't handle it, so the video recording chugged a bit. The the actual game itself played fine, but playing back the video, it was chugging and it, it looked like my computer was struggling horrifically. I mean, it was technically, but just on the video recording end. This new one seems to have no problems whatsoever. Bearing in mind, it's also on higher settings as well, so it should find it, be finding it even harder. Now, since I like crowdsourcing things, do, does anyone have any good links to RAM overclocking? I'd like to maybe tweak the RAM a little bit. So if anyone's got any good videos on that, and I suppose that I need to tweak the uh, CPU fans. They're too loud already. It seems the moment my CPU hits about 50 degrees or a little under, the fans just crank all the way up to max because of the profile settings in the motherboard. I'm going to have to do some tweaking around with that. And I've learned from sharing with the internet, everyone's really helpful about how you actually tweak things and improve them. And oh, never mind. Never mind. I, I'm going to ramble some more anyway. I uh, hope you enjoyed our little trip down PC building and uh, good luck.